I've already covered one of the plank units when I covered plank length. I think then it's time to have a crack at another one. So today I'm going to look at the plank temperature and it's about to get very strange. Let's find out more. Plank temperature is what we think is the highest temperature possible. And it's 1.4 times 10 to the 32 Kelvin. And in this video, we're going to try and imagine just how hot that is and what the implications of this value are. In order to do this, we're going to look at some other very hot things to compare. In order to talk about temperatures on this scale, we need an appropriate temperature scale. So for this video, I'll be using the Kelvin scale of temperature. One Kelvin is equal to one degree Celsius, but the Kelvin scale starts at absolute zero or zero Kelvin. This equates to minus 273.15 degrees Celsius. And this is the lowest temperature possible and the temperature at which all molecules stop moving. Well, this isn't quite true. Even at absolute zero, atoms would still vibrate with what's called zero point energy. These vibrations make sure that quantum mechanics isn't broken and we wouldn't want to break that, would we? Absolute zero refers to the temperature at which there's no kinetic energy from molecular movements available to transfer to any other system. A bit like if I have, let's say, a really hot cup of tea, this will lose heat to the surrounding air. A cup of tea at absolute zero would have no energy to transfer to the surrounding air. And this is what temperature refers to. Heat is the kinetic energy of atoms and molecules in other words, the amount of energy molecules have as a result of their movement. The faster the movement of particles, the greater the kinetic energy, and so the higher the temperature. Well then let's start our journey at zero Kelvin. I said that at that temperature all molecules stop moving around. Although we've actually never managed to generate this temperature, the closest we've ever got to absolute zero is very close, actually it's 0.5. 0.000000001 Kelvin. As you get closer to absolute zero, more and more energy is needed, and so it's thought that it would actually be impossible to reach absolute zero. But we've already got pretty close, and in 2018, a cold lab was sent up to the International Space Station to see if we can go even colder. So, at one point in time, the coldest temperature in the known universe was here on Earth. Well, I'll come back to that idea a little bit later. At this kind of temperature, the strange and elusive Bose-Einstein condensate can exist. This weird state of matter occurs when atoms become so cold and move so little that those atoms lie very close to each other. So close, in fact, that they start to act as a single atom. The coldest we've ever found in the natural universe is in the Boomerang Nebula. This is just one Kelvin above absolute zero. The nebula has an ageing star at its heart and gases expanding outwards. The gases in this nebula are expanding very quickly and this accounts for the very low temperature. Coming up slightly in temperature, here we find the background temperature of space and this is 2.7 Kelvin. But why isn't it absolute zero? Well, about 13.8 billion years ago, the universe was formed by the Big Bang. And a temperature of 2.7 Kelvin is the remnant of that. Imagine my cup of tea from before. If I left my cup of tea for long enough, it'll cool down further and further and further. And the 2.7 Kelvin is the cooling of the universe that's happened for 13.8 billion years. So, let's go up by a couple of orders of magnitude. Have a look what interesting temperatures we can find around there. So what about the lowest natural temperature on Earth? The record for the lowest temperature physically recorded on Earth at ground level was at the Soviet Vostok station in Antarctica. The temperature was 184 Kelvin and this is minus 89.2 degrees Celsius or minus 128.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's move on and start to look at some temperatures that will be considered to be warm, although of course this is all relative. 
The hottest natural temperature recorded on Earth at ground level was 329.85 Kelvin. This is 56.7 degrees Celsius or 134.1 degrees Fahrenheit. This temperature was recorded at Furnace Creek Ranch in Death Valley on the 10th of July 1913. There have been numerous unconfirmed higher temperatures, but that is still the highest verified one. Staying with the highest planetary temperatures, and still within our range of hundreds of Kelvin, we come to the surface of the planet Venus to find the highest planetary temperature in the solar system, and this clocks in at 737.5 Kelvin, although temperatures near the core of Jupiter are actually higher. And around here, at 798 Kelvin, we find the Draper point. This is the temperature at which nearly all objects start to glow red, but I'll be coming back to that idea again a bit later. Let's go up another order of magnitude to the thousands of Kelvin. We're now at 10 to the power 3 Kelvin. And here we find our first stellar temperature. T-class brown dwarfs have surface temperatures of about 1000 Kelvin. T-class brown dwarfs are really fascinating. And Lumen 16b is an example of a T-class brown dwarf. And this has a surface temperature of 1210 Kelvin. Its neighbour Lumen 16a is an L-class brown dwarf. And this has a similar surface temperature of 1350 Kelvin. Next, we're coming back home and at 5650 Kelvin, we have the highest natural temperature here on Earth. And to be more specific, this is the highest natural temperature in the Earth. This is the temperature of the inner core, which is a solid ball of mainly iron and nickel. Staying within our solar system, we now move to the Sun for our next temperature in our little journey. The surface of the Sun has a temperature just a little higher than that found at the core of the Earth, and this is rated at 5780 Kelvin, though solar flares can reach much higher temperatures. Moving up another order of magnitude, well, nearly, and we're now going to take a trip through the galaxy. We're going to travel just 8.6 light years to the brightest star in the night sky, that of Sirius. This is actually two stars, but I'm interested in the largest of them, Sirius A. This is a bluish white star, quite a lot larger than our Sun, and about 25 times more luminous. This star has a surface temperature of 9940 Kelvin, so very nearly 10,000 Kelvin. The other star in this pair, Sirius B, is a white dwarf star. This star is actually a little smaller than the Earth, and because of its size, its luminosity is only about 5% of that of our Sun. However, this star is a very hot place indeed. The surface temperature of Sirius B is 25,000 Kelvin, more than four times hotter than the surface of our Sun. Okay, we need to move on as we're still nowhere near that Planck temperature. So let's move on and have a look at millions of Kelvin. And let's come back to our own solar system and dive deep into our own Sun. From the surface conditions of nearly 6000 Kelvin, as we move towards the centre of the star, the temperature goes up significantly. And when we get to its core, the temperature has reached a massive 15.7 million Kelvin. That's 15.7 times 10 to the 6 Kelvin. We still need to move on to reach our target temperature of 1.4 times 10 to the 32 Kelvin. So let's move on up to the billions of Kelvin range or 10 to the 9 Kelvin and we find a couple of interesting temperatures. 100 seconds after the Big Bang, the whole of the then universe was a billion Kelvin. This is one giga Kelvin. Massive stars burn through the hydrogen fuel very quickly. When they deplete this hydrogen, they start burning heavier elements and the temperatures of the fusion process increase. During the final five days or so of the star's life, before they reach supernova, they burn silicon. And this process generates about 2.5 giga Kelvin. At a temperature of about 1 terakelvin, or 1 times 10 to the 12 kelvin, 
we find the temperature of a newly formed neutron star. And at a slightly higher temperature of about 1.2 terakelvin, we find the melting point of matter itself. At this temperature, the energy is so high that it rips apart the quarks that make up the protons and the neutrons. This then produces a quark gluon plasma, a kind of fundamental particle soup, but much, much hotter. I mentioned the highest temperature found on Earth earlier, but the highest temperature ever found on Earth was produced at the Large Hadron Collider in 2015, and this was measured at 5.5 trillion Kelvin, or 5.5 times 10 to the 12 Kelvin. At its production for a short time, this may have been the highest temperature in the known universe, hotter even than a supernova explosion. But before we try to imagine just how unbelievably hot the Planck temperature is, let's have a little look at the implications of this temperature. And here it's going to get very strange. Like the other Planck units, Planck temperature is derived from some of the fundamental constants in the universe. I don't want to delve too deeply into the maths here, because, well, mainly because I'm not a mathematician. Planck temperature combines the speed of light and the Planck constant, as well as the Boltzmann constant and the gravitational constant. But what does it mean? What are the reasons behind this temperature? Well, there are a couple of particularly interesting implications of this temperature. Firstly, I mentioned earlier the Draper point. This is the temperature at which all objects give off red light, they glow red hot. This is as a result of something called black body radiation. As bodies get hotter, they give off radiation, and at certain temperatures, some of the radiation they give off would be visible to the human eye. And this is what happens when an object glows red hot. As an object gets hotter and hotter, they give off light of different colours. Red, then orange, then yellow. And this relates to the different wavelengths of light given off. As the temperature goes up further and further, the wavelengths of the radiation emitted becomes shorter and shorter. And maybe some of you can see where I'm going with this. When we get to the Planck temperature, the wavelength of the radiation would become the Planck length. And as we know, at that point, physics breaks. We cannot get below the Planck length with our current model of the universe, and so that sort of sets an upper limit for the temperature. But hey, I'm no physicist, so if you are a physicist and know what the maths actually stack up to, then please let me know in the comments below. The second kind of related implication is about to get very strange. As I've said, I'm no expert on this, so I'm just going to try and explain it as I understand it. As we know from Mr. Einstein, energy and mass are kind of interchangeable. We also know that temperature is a measure of how fast particles are moving, and this is a measure of kinetic energy. This means that as particles move faster and faster, they become more massive. This gain in mass is sometimes called relativistic mass, but this appears to be a bit of a controversial term, so I'm just going to use it once. So particles moving faster are more massive, now at normal temperatures, this mass difference is insignificant. However, as the temperatures become closer to the Planck temperature, two things happen. Firstly, as we know, gravity is a function of the mass of a body, as they spend space-time. Also, gravity is by far the weakest of the fundamental forces. It's many, many orders of magnitude, weaker than the electromagnetic, strong nuclear and weak nuclear forces. However, at the Planck temperature, particles have gained so much mass that gravity becomes as strong as the other forces. We've no understanding of quantum gravity, so again our models of the universe break down at these temperatures. In addition, particles with such high mass would give rise to Planck scale black holes. These are the hottest black holes it's possible to exist and these black holes evaporate very quickly, and this would cool down the system. So it may be that nature itself prevents the Planck temperature from ever being reached. So just how unbelievably hot is the Planck temperature? Well, let's start by imagining just how hot the core of the sun is. The Planck temperature is 10 million billion 
billion times hotter than the centre of our sun. This is a temperature where our physical laws as we understand them break down. We don't know if it's possible to even get to, let alone go above this temperature. But what we do know is that if we do do it, we have no idea what will happen. Anyway, it's time for us to come back to the relative cool of planet Earth. And don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, then hit that subscribe button for more geeky content. And until next time, thank you for watching.